Today's episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. Stick around for a great deal with RBR. Hey guys, welcome back to RBR. I'm Raz, your host, and we have had a lot of the brand new S-Class on the channel. Unsurprisingly, because it's a super, super important car in the automotive industry. We started off, of course, first with the first look of the camo car. Then we went to the brand new infotainment system MBUX inside the new interior of the car. Then we had our first look, and then finally, the first drive in our last video. Now, in the last video, I also commented how prepped the design seemed to be for a Maybach version, and I even did a guesstimate rendering of it. And lo and behold, I was right, because that was the next version to follow. It's the car that we are looking at today. Be happy, because it is a V12. We're gonna have a look at three different specs and then have a first look at the interior. So let's dive straight in and have a look at the brand new Mercedes Maybach S-Class. So guys, today's sponsor is Simply Safe. Now there's always a rise in break-ins during the holiday season. Just ask Kevin from Home Alone. That's why Simply Safe are doing a huge holiday offer with us at RBR where you get 30% off your order and a free HD camera with any order of a system. Simply Safe is a home security system that makes it super easy to secure your home. All you need to do is order it online via our link below. It gets delivered straight to your house and you can set it up in under an hour. Now myself, for example, I've got a Press GTR Roadster sitting here. The house needs to be secure. From there on, your home is professionally monitored 24 seven and there's no contracts to get into at all. Indeed, just the normal setup process is super easy with the base station Keep guiding you with its voice. Um. They've got sensors to cover all your windows and doors, plus loads of extras like water sensors, temperature sensors. As you can see here, I've installed a sensor in the window and it's working immediately for me. So should any nefarious types try to invade your home, the monitoring center will call the police immediately. That leaves Batman to attend to more important stuff. So there you go guys, super easy to set up. All you need to do, go to simplysafe.com forward slash remove before race. You'll get 30% off and a free HD camera. That's simplysafe.com forward slash remove before race. Do support our sponsors guys. It massively, massively helps the channel. It helps me make more videos for you guys. So guys, today, my back. It's back in its full S-Class version, which is truly the flagship of the entire brand. Now, some interesting behind the scenes for you guys, first of all, at the moment we are at the end of 2020, in case anyone in the future is watching this. So most of Europe and the world is locked down. So flying over to Germany to review this car wasn't really an option. Luckily, Mercedes know with a little bit of magic and interdimensional tinkering that is unique to RBR, bringing their new Maybach here was absolutely no problem for me. Now, in case you don't know, Mercedes Maybach, as it's called now, is the hyper mega super luxury arm for Mercedes-Benz cars, much in the way that Mercedes-AMG is the driving performance arm for standard Mercedes-Benz cars. Maybach has also taken this idea of a sub-brand to attach onto pretty much any Mercedes-Benz that they want to add the DNA to. So think of it in the same way that you would think of an AMG car. We're talking unique exterior elements, unique drivetrain, unique engines, unique technologies, and a completely bespoke interior. The same thing going on for my back, but with a slant towards luxury. And there's no better example of this than the last my back that we reviewed, which is part of this new generation, which was the GLS 600 my back. That took a standard GLS and added that my back DNA, both outside and inside, and in terms of all the technologies that you would expect of a super luxury car, and brought it into what was before it, just a standard Mercedes SUV, if we're honest. So really, that is the best example. But when you and I think of my back, we think of the saloon version, don't we? And perhaps we actually think of the not so successful original Maybachs that were part of the rebirth of the brand. These didn't really sell that well. I'm talking of course about the 57 and the 62. These are the ones that seem to stick in everyone's head. But when you look at the W222 series, these were selling like hotcakes across China, USA, Germany, Russia. And they were doing that because they went under the illusion that they were some kind of mega hyper brand by themselves, but they were part of the Mercedes brand, but as a sub-brand. And I think customers kind of resonated with it. Plus the cars look pretty damn nice as an upgraded S-Class. Though never quite to the level 
of rivals like Rolls-Royce or Bentley in terms of trying to differentiate the exterior enough from S-Class in my opinion. Now, when we look at the brand new S-Class, already in its standard form, it's taken quite a leap forward. Everything to me looked that much sharper. It looked that much prepped, as I said, for my back. And I really even preferred the standard car even to the AMG line one, which are kind of betray just how nicely the car in its base form was designed. But now the my back version takes things, as I said, to the next level. Let's have a look at all of the design elements of this new car. Now, the first thing that I'm most happy about, it's my favorite feature on the car, is the unique bonnet. Yes, this Maybach has a unique bonnet versus the standard S-Class. It's got a lovely chrome trim that goes along the center of the bonnet from the Mercedes-Benz Star all the way through to the windshield. And this hasn't come out of the blue. This was in direct reference to the Maybach Vision 600 Coupe and Cabriolet that showed that exact same feature. This is a feature that we've seen in the past on the most classic, the very, very early days of Mercedes luxury. And it's nice to see that come here. And the fact that Maybach now has a completely unique bonnet really speaks to the customer that they're really taking the effort to make things different. Apart from that, you have, of course, the Maybach grille. This is now the signature design feature for the Maybach cars. It's got these tiny, tiny vertical slats in the grille, all of which have this very typical Maybach shape, as I pointed out in the GLS review. Instead of the laurel wreath at the top of the grille, you've got Maybach written in the new Maybach typography. It's very large, it's quite intimidating, but most of all, it gives a face to Maybach. Apart from the grille, the lower bumper, again, completely unique to Maybach, which is nice because the prefaces of the 222 was quite lazy in this regard. It was using the SE body with just loads of chrome added. Whereas this has got a more open face on the front, which is great because behind it, we've got a V12. So it looks more aggressive. And of course, it's got layers and layers and layers of chrome because chrome means more luxury, right? Right? The side sills are unique to my back as well. They're all chrome plated as you would expect, but the best thing about the side profile of the car is again, something we've seen already in the previous S-Class my back and in the GLS, and those are the chrome windows and the extended rear door, which is 18 centimeters longer. We'll go into that in a minute. But in terms of the actual design, A, the rear door is larger and B, the triangle window on it sits on the body rather than on the door. If I compare it now to normal S-Class, you'll see the entire window sits on the door, whereas on my back, that triangle fixed window sits on the body, making that part of the rear window and door that much larger. Of course, the B pillar is chromed, which is a typical my back trait. And the other typical my back bit is the badge, which sits on the rear C pillar as well. Then we head to the rear again, just like you'd find in AMGs. You've got a unique lower bumper with a unique diffuser. These exhausts we've seen for the second time now, first time we saw them were on the GLS Maybach. So that same design carrying through a strong DNA across the family. Again, more bits of chrome. And then we've got the Maybach badge on the rear. Again, unique typography for Maybach. It's not the same font being used as on any other Mercedes-Benz. And finally, we have unique wheels for Maybach. These are my favorite. They are the multi-spokes. I love the way they look. They're clearly aerodynamically optimized, but they look fantastic with the very slim silver spokes in again, kind of a Maybach shape. Then you've got the center locking design with the Maybach logo, which is very, very nice. You can also go full baller spec with the monoblocks, again, which I actually really quite like on Maybach. I don't tend to like them on AMGs. Here it fits really, really well. Again, your center locking wheel nut with the Maybach logo as well. Now, the other very unique thing, which is again, part of the Maybach DNA as it's on GLS as well, is the two-tone paintwork, which is exceedingly special. Now, what I didn't realize last time, whereas a normal paint job might take a few hours in the factory or however long it might take, this takes an entire week to do and it's all hand done. And when you look at it close up, you can really see why it's really, really fine work all done by hand and it makes the output of these cars that much less, but it makes the cars that much more special. If I can, I'll go into more depth on this if we drive this car in the future. The diamond white with the obsidian black looks particularly nice. I like this other specification as well, but really I think the full Patagonia red has my heart in this particular Maybach series. So loads of things changed on the Maybach to make it unique. Pretty much everything that you see changed on an AMG model versus standard Mercedes, which is really good. Maybe even more thanks to that bonnet 
I think the bonnet is a huge win and I think that they need to extend this idea further, which leads me to what I think wasn't done quite so well, which is using the exact same lights on both the front and the rear of the car. Now you may say that I'm talking about change for the sake of change, but look, this is a car that has to go up against the Rolls Royces, the Bentleys of the world, and for it to share the exact same lights as the standard S-Class, for me, it rubs me wrong. Even though these lights are great with their digital light technology, doing the uh, signs on the ground, etc., that's all fine, but really to have a unique signature within the light that would have denoted my back, in my opinion, would have really have been the cherry on top for this car. Now the size increase. Of course, it's longer than the normal long wheelbase S-Class. It's an entire 18 centimeters longer, and all of that goes to the benefit of the rear passengers, as you would expect. But we'll look at the interior in a minute. First, powertrain. Yes, it is a V12. It's a V12 by turbo, producing 612 brake horsepower and 900 Newton meters in the Top Dog S680 formatic. There is a lower version in the S580, which has a V8 with the hybrid system, 503 brake horsepower with extra EQ brake horsepower and torque added to it. I do find the fact that this gets the V12 and the GLS doesn't a little bit weird. Might be a point of contention for those buyers, but I'm just really happy that this has the V12. Might be one of the last S-Classes ever to have it. Although AMG said that they wouldn't do V12s anymore, no such promise was made by my back. Technology-wise, everything carries over from the standard S-Class. So you get the rear axle steering, which reduces the turning circle of the car by about two meters, kind of making it like A-Class levels of turning circle, which is incredible. We also get the 16 airbags, so all of the safety elements that the new S-Class brought in for the rear passengers. And all of the suspension options come standard apart from the E-Active suspension, which is an option, but that should really betray to you just how good the suspension of the standard S-Class is that my back did not need to make huge changes in order to have it as luxurious as possible. Now, the heart and soul of my back is always the interior, particularly the rear. So I'm gonna show you a first look of that inside right now. The first unique thing that this my back has for the interior occupants is active driving noise compensation which is an arty farty way of saying noise cancellation for the inside occupants. So it works very much like noise cancelling headphones, but what this does is it uses the 4D Burmeister high-end sound system speakers in order to neutralize low frequency and unwanted vibrational sounds and make the interior as quiet as possible. This is really next level stuff in terms of noise cancellation. Of course, the leather and trims inside are all completely bespoke and unique to Maybach. You cannot get these on a standard S-Class. The steering wheel, it's got its own Maybach application with unique leather trims and the trims on the steering wheel themselves have unique placement. I am disappointed though that it is the standard shape steering wheel again. I would like to see a Maybach specific one because of where this car sits in the hierarchy of Mercedes. The leather stitching though is stitched completely uniquely for my back with larger triangles in the stitching and double stitching alongside them. Again, all of this unique to that car. Just behind the steering wheel, of course, you've got the all new 3D driver zone as we explored in the past, but now we've got a unique my back display. And as you'd expect, there's loads of digital rose gold because Gordon Wagner loves rose gold and rose gold is the main trim preferred for my back. So you see it all over the dials and everywhere possible within the UI itself to denote this as different from all the other S-Classes. The main center screen also gets a unique Maybach opening sequence as well. These little things I really like because it shows they've taken the effort to make this a Maybach. In terms of that rose gold theme, you also get a unique rose gold ambient lighting color and an amethyst one as well. Both of those unique to Maybach. And when you sit in the car, there is a welcome sequence again, which is unique to the series. Now there are some gorgeous trims on the rear section of this car, which link to the front seats as well. And the whole rear first class seating, as they call it, has been extensively upgraded. Firstly, behind the front driver and passenger seats, you see much bigger trims in terms of the wood and ambient lighting. These are all unique to my back and they look absolutely stunning, especially with the lighting on. Of course, you benefit from the rear screens of MBUX as well, which carry through from the standard car, but everything is surrounded by that much more luxury in the Maybach version. You can see that much more space in the interior thanks to that 18 centimeter area. Particular note where you can see it the most is that center console area, whereas in the normal car, you had a, 
a single opening. This has double, and it's so satisfying to see it open and close. It's just as smooth as the standard car, but to see two sections doing it is really quite nice. Just behind that, we've got a folding tray table as well, and there's a plethora of wireless phone charging areas available in the rear seats as well. Another quite unique thing is the use of adaptive ambient lighting, which gives you either a broad light in the interior to highlight everything, or a focused light, almost like a lamp, on the area that you're working or you're reading. And this is unique to my back, and again, gives the rear passengers control over their lighting like we've never had before. As I would always expect on my back, you've got those lovely glasses that you find in the storage areas. The best one hides behind the waterfall wood trim elements in between the two rear seats and you can see it hiding behind the Maybach logo, that's lovely. That trim element itself, again, so gorgeous, such a highlight of the rear section of the Maybach. We saw it in the GLS as well, looks as nice in the new S-Class, and really finishes off that rear section as something truly first class. Another first for Maybach here is extending rear seat belts. As you normally see in a coupe or cabriolet, this allows the rear passengers to be even more lazy and simply grab their seat belts as it extends from the rear seat. Now, probably the best new feature added to the rear is something called comfort rear doors. And this is exactly what you think it is. It allows you to operate the rear doors either from the touch screens, the keys, the driver itself can operate it, or there is a button in the rear and you can open and close the rear doors from this. Again, trying to match the rivals in this regard. And it can also be done with a simple nudge rather than pressing any buttons, and then the doors will close by intuition correctly. So guys, there you have it. That's the first look at the brand new Mercedes Maybach S-Class. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to actually get to spend some time within this car, particularly in that first class rear area, and then see what this updated V12 is like. It'd be nice to get some more information on the drivetrain. So if you have enjoyed this first look, please do like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, support our sponsors as well and I'll be back with more my back soon. See you next time.